Okay. Oh my fucking gosh, oh my Tywell. God. Who hired this guy? Could I put a What do we? I want go it back. Mouth. What would happen? I'm just out. Hello, Hello everyone, and welcome back to your favorite show for all things gaming and really tech related, Gen 2. I'm Tyrell Childress. And I'm Jonas Pilat. We're glad you're joining us this week on Gen 2. So let's get on with this week's gaming releases. Dredge is a single-player fishing adventure with a sinister undercurrent. Sell your catch, upgrade your boat, and dredge the depths for long-buried secrets. Explore a mysterious archipelago and discover why some things are best left forgotten. Dredge releases on March 30th for all major platforms. I'm here in White Sands, Petria's most luxurious community, where in the upcoming days, President Tyrak is set to make a big announcement. Maybe I left you a long time. Road 96, Mile Zero is a prequel game to the critically acclaimed Road 96. Players will alternate between the roles of Zoe and Kaito, two teenagers with different backgrounds and beliefs. They're good friends, but that could all change quite soon. Their journey will challenge their friendship in everything they believe in. Road 96, Mile Zero releases on April 4th for all major platforms. Those games sound awesome. Now let's kick it to the news. Jonas, what the heck is happening? What do you mean? Okay, you know what, Never mind. Let's just get on with the rest of the news. Sounds good. Okay. Oh. This year especially, we've seen leaps and bounds with different types of AI. If you're into how games are created, Unreal Engine 5.2, the widely used game engine, is set to receive a new set of procedural tools as announced by Epic. These tools enable game developers to construct expansive game environments using only a limited number of custom-built models, with Unreal Engine 5 taking care of the remaining procedural generation. Observing a game world materialize or real-time landscape take shape is super cool for anyone. During the stream, we witnessed a designer entering a significant rock formation in the middle of a creek bed, with logs automatically linking it to the nearby surroundings and moving it back in its moments. Also, in other news, Valve has released that Counter-Strike Global Offensive players will receive a free upgrade to Counter-Strike 2, a completely overhauled version of the game. The new upgrade promises new features and updates, while players will be able to retain their inventory from CSGO, benefiting from enhanced lighting and better materials in Counter-Strike 2. Unlimited test is available for select CSGO players with a full launch plan for this summer. But that's all we got right now for news. Make sure to subscribe, like, and turn on notifications to not miss our future episode. So let's check out. That's all the time we have left for news. So stick around for Where It All Began of Jessica, Anime Stitch of Olivia, and Get the Clip with Joe. Uh, Tyrell, that's the wrong program. Oh, uh, my, my apologies. Uh, I mean, stick around for Digital Digestion of Garrett, 10 out of 10 with Gabriel Lozano, and The Price is Free with Evan Saxton. There we go. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Digital Digestion. Today, we look into an iconic character, a recognizable hero from all of our childhoods. One of those who is captivating, their actions impactful, and their voice powerful. Today, we have a special guest with Pablo Sanchez. That's right, today we're looking at Pablo Sanchez from the Backyard Sports franchise. Also, I must say this as a side note, the games are very old, so the footage may look a little rough. On top of that, I could not get an emulator to work, so I did my very best finding footage on YouTube. So, let's get into it. Pablo Sanchez, as I said, is from the Backyard Sports franchise, the GOAT of your childhood games when you should have been doing homework, but instead were playing games. Pablo first appeared in Backyard Baseball in 1997 and dominated the game. Baseball is by far his best sport, yet he does make appearance in football and basketball as well as others. Pablo is a pretty straightforward guy. He just plays baseball really, really, really well. His all-around stats are great, making him a fan favorite and one of the first you should choose in every single draft. Pablo and his buddy Pete Wheeler are also a great dynamic duo. If you want a stacked team that wins every single game, I would suggest drafting those two guys first. 
Anyway, back to Pablo. It's even funny that the game states this about Pablo. Pablo is typically upbeat, confident, and positive, but mostly towards himself. He knows how good he is, examples of which have been saying goodbyes to baseballs when he's stepping up to bat, before even swinging the bat and blaming the bat instead of taking responsibility for it when he strikes out. His cockiness goes unnoticed by his teammates, however, due to him speaking strictly Spanish. Of course, Pablo's actions also make up for his personality, as almost every time he gets up the bat, the ball is going over the fence or out of the stadium. Heck, Pablo can even compete with the pros like Mark McGuire, Barry Bonds, and Sammy Sosa, but um, uh, those guys' power and strength come from something else. Uh, let's just say it's not the same juice that the kids are using in the game. And that does it for this week of Digital Digestion. And that was Pablo Sanchez from Backyard Baseball. A very unique and interesting character I know. And one you probably didn't see coming. If you want any other characters in the future, let me know down below who you want to see. I'm your host, Garrett Bevins, signing off. Have a good one. Can Pablo do it again? From the stretch, Rose. Pablo! This is the greatest Pablo Sanchez game of all time! A career game for Pablo. Welcome back to 10 out of 10, where we go over some of the best video games that are truly 10 out of 10s. Today, we're going to be looking at Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. At the beginning of Skyrim, you find yourself on a wagon full of prisoners heading to be executed. After arriving in town and almost getting your head chopped off, a dragon attacks just in time and begins to destroy everything in sight. During all the chaos, you're able to slip away and leave town. Before this dragon attack, the people of Skyrim believed that dragons were only myths, but now it's no question that dragons are real and they're back in Skyrim. After barely escaping the last attack, you travel to a city known as Whiterun. But, of course, another dragon attacks, and you have no choice but to fight it. Eventually, you take down the dragon, but to your surprise, you absorb the power of the dragon and eventually become more powerful than you already are. After speaking with others around you, you learn this power is known as being a dragonborn. Throughout the game, you must learn how to use your new power and find out why the dragons are returning to Skyrim. As you explore the massive map Skyrim has to offer, you'll find new weapons, spells, and armor that can make you stronger. The game allows you to personalize your character however you want. You can really be whoever you want to be in Skyrim. If it's from the way your character looks, all the way down to certain factions you decide to join, there's always new options to personalize your character and become really whoever you want to be. Depending on how you build your character and the choices you make, it can completely change the gameplay and how others around you treat you. Maybe you want to be a mage that only fights with magic, or maybe you just want to be a heavily armored soldier that can swing his axe through anything. It's really up to you to decide, and like I said before, depending on how you treat certain people and whose side you take, you can have a completely different experience from the last time you played. I personally have played this game multiple times, and every playthrough feels completely different because of who I wanted to be and the choices I made while playing. On top of your own character, the story of the world and others around you is equally important. Almost every character you encounter in this game can be talked to and most of them have their own missions you can spend hours on. With the many hours I've spent in Skyrim, I'm still finding new missions and side quests I never even knew were possible. You'll constantly find yourself losing track of time and spending more time on side missions than the actual main missions. There's so much content and things to do in Skyrim, you'll always feel immersed in this medieval world. Even though the base game of Skyrim is absolutely incredible, there's an entire modding community that makes Skyrim even better than it already is. These mods can be accessed directly off the main menu of Skyrim and even be used on consoles. Mods allow people to add whatever they want in the game. If it's from better graphics, to sending random people into space, you can really do anything. With Skyrim's amazing open world, great character customization, and a great modding community, it's no question why this game is a 10 out of 10. Hey, have you been? Oh, nothing much. 
Yeah, I'd love to chat soon. I've just been really busy recently. Yeah, I could probably squeeze you in. Let me check. Let's see. How about Wednesday at 6? All right, sounds good. See you then. What are you doing? What? Tyrell. I, where, where are we? I, Antrim, what are you doing? I, okay. Um, yeah, well, what are you I'm doing? I'm trying to take over Gen 2 for Nerd Central. Why? You know, just, uh, Did Porter uh, tell you to do this? No. Uh, Tyra, why do you listen to him? He's he's using you, dude. He's also very aggressive. Have you ever noticed that? Yeah, I yeah. have. He's also kind of, you know, he has a couple screws loose. Yeah, he really does. Okay, you, yeah. okay. do you promise not to take over the show? Okay, yeah. I, pr I promise. Vicky swear. Okay. okay. I'll get us out of here. You wanna see something cool? <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Look at that. That's so cool, right? Yo, what? I know, that's awesome. Oh my god, I wish okay. I could do that. Hey, since you're here, we're gonna continue watching PAX. How does that sound? Yeah, that sounds great. All right, awesome. Let's, Let's get watching. Hello, my name is Evan, and welcome back to The Price is Free. This week we are talking about Warhammer 40k Gladius. Gladius is a 4x type game, meaning it's a combination of turn-based combat and real-time strategy. A game similar to this would be Civ 5. Gladius has more of a focus on the combat and pretty much completely gets rid of any diplomatic options, being focused on conquering everything on the map with violent options only. Gladius is part of the expansive 40k universe, with many different races and a deep expansive lore that goes from video games, shows, books, and just about any other type of media you can think of, which can make it pretty intimidating for anyone interested in trying to play these games, but with a little bit of research and just giving a couple of the games in the series a chance, then it does not seem as scary as you might think. There are four starting races being Space Marines, Orcs, Necrons, and the Imperial Guard but there has been a multitude of other races added from DLC since the game's release back in 2018. The planet Gladius Prime was a peaceful planet, but after relics were found and activated on the planet, everything went to chaos and a war broke out, trapping the residents on the planet trying to survive and dominate over everyone else. And the dread is cool. While the game isn't fast-paced and action-packed, it has that certain satisfaction that all 4X games seem to have that's exclusive to them. The skill curve in learning the game is pretty steep, having to learn to manage everything from resources, your city, and having all your units to keep everything under control while also defending from and attacking the other factions in your game. It took me a while to figure out how the game played, taking me about two full games to fully understand what is going on, and each game taking about two hours. The gameplay is more simple compared to other 4X games, like Civ 5, so if you want to get into this style of game, then this is definitely a good place to wet your toes. Upgrading your units in this is very satisfying, starting with regular ground units with just bolt guns, but can build up to tanks, mechs, and oral strikes that can devastate anything trying to kill you. There are also outposts you can grab from around the map, which gives you constant vision on the immediate area around the outpost, and generates resources for you to use every turn. Enemy factions can take these outposts, but that goes the same to you, making outposts a valuable resource to fight over in highly contested areas on the map. Another game that I've played in the Warhammer series is Warhammer Vermintide, and compared to Gladius, it is a completely different game. Vermintide is a first-person shooter set in a dark fantasy, using muskets, swords, and other medieval weapons, but still set in the 40k universe, with a playstyle similar to Left 4 Dead. These games are so drastically different, which makes it so hard to get into the series because of this, scaring away new fans just from not even knowing where to start playing the games. Check out Gladius on the Epic Store before its free week is up, because after that, you'll have to shovel out some cold, hard cash. Check in next time to see next week's free game. Thank you for tuning in this week for The Price is Free. I'm your host, Evan. Peace out. Welcome back to Mustard's Monthly Mayhem, where it's a new month, so we have three new games to review. The first game of this month's edition will be Minecraft Dungeons. Minecraft Dungeons takes what you know and love about Minecraft and puts it in a similar top-down adventure format of Diablo, the video game series. This game is very bare bones when it comes to armor, tools, and weapons as you get one slot for armor, one for melee weapon, and one for a ranged weapon. You are offered three other slots in your hotbar that can hold unique artifacts or arrows that can be used to aid you in battle but are on cooldowns. These can range from items used to deal massive damage, summon mobs to aid 
aid you or give the user a range of status effects during the battle. The best part about all the unique items and artifacts is that you can make a combination of them that will fit your playstyle. To top it all off and make each item even more unique is the fact that you can have over a hundred different enchantments that can apply to weapons and armor to make them even more powerful. The initial playthrough of this game is on the shorter side, taking roughly 7 hours to complete on default mode, which unlocks adventure mode, and then finally it'll unlock apocalypse mode. So while yes you can play through the story quickly, I enjoy that there are a lot of side quests to do and more modes to unlock. A nice feature to the game is the faded opacity map that you can overlay on your screen. At first I found it distracting, but over time it was nice to have on the screen to help you explore every path which will have hidden loot or areas to explore. The map is also no longer distracting me, as it doesn't hinder any gameplay, but it is nice to have the toggle feature so people can choose. A lot of the cosmetics are locked behind paywalls such as the DLCs. There's another option which they recently added in the battle pass, which would be the best value, however, it is strictly for more cosmetics. This game has some basic customization and nice pre-built skins for people to choose from, but in my opinion this game did a good thing and shifted its focus to the actual gameplay and grinding the levels to unlock new gear instead of going over the top with different skins. My favorite game mode in Minecraft Dungeons is the Tower. The Tower is found in the main camp area and can be a great task to complete. It usually consists of 30 floors with 3 bosses at the 10th, 20th, and the final boss at the 30th floor. You gain power-ups and strong equipment easily, as you won't keep any of this gear when you exit the tower, but instead will get a powerful item scaling on your player's power level. The tower is a great way to experiment with all the unique armor and artifacts without the risk of losing an important level. You will also be able to complete the tower during events which the game puts on that will change the tower and put a spin on it until the event is over. I'm glad that Minecraft Dungeons exceeded my expectations for this game, as it's another one that I have never heard before. This game seems to have a perfect mix of adventure and strategy, where it does not take a lot to play the basics, but it also has a skill gap that if you want to learn what the best enchantments and gear are for each situation. With all that being said, I think that this game deserves to be the first 10 out of 10 game that I have reviewed. It is easy to pick up and play while making you want to come back to it. That will do it for this week. Make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications so you don't miss next week's review. Hello, this is Gabe Chadwick with RP Geeks, where we look at some of the greatest RPGs of all time and look what is good about them and what may be below average. Today, we're looking at Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter is a game where you hunt monsters. It's a game that really lives up to its name and really doesn't shy away from its simplistic concept. But the fun part of the game is the complex and in-depth ways to prepare and gather resources for the hunt, like specific elemental armor or specific elemental damage to counter a monster's devastating attacks. I've never been more conflicted playing a video game in my life because nothing is more exciting than fighting a monster for 30 minutes and then beating it. But at the same time, nothing is more frustrating than fighting a monster for 30 minutes just to get one shot at the last minute. But that's part of the Monster Hunter experience and I wouldn't have it any other way. And overall, I believe the game strikes a relatively good balance. The one thing that I never expected when playing Monster Hunter is the complexity of this game. When playing Monster Hunter, you have to manage not only your standard items in your inventory, but you also have to manage your crafting materials and manage what food you eat to help you survive the hunt. And along with this, you have 14 unique weapons that all have different weapon branches that have unique quirks about them. These weapons vary from the nimble bow to the juggernaut greatsword. All of these weapons could have an entire game built around them, but instead they give you the ability to pick up any weapon you want and drastically change your experience with the game. And each weapon can have an entire encyclopedia describing how to correctly use them and maximize the damage. Your weapon can make or break your experience with the game, so choose carefully. To say that the game is liberating is an understatement, and though it may be rough around the edges, Monster Hunter Rise scratches that primal itch in my brain that wants to crack monster skulls with a massive hammer that feels like you're hitting them with a truck, while also providing one of the most complex gameplay loops in the modern age and standing strong in its adamance on staying that way is what really sells this game in my eyes. And though it doesn't have the most thought-provoking story or enriching characters, I would say that everyone should give this game a look, because nothing beats exterminating majestic beasts that are just minding their own business and using their fur to create cute clothes for your cat. Thanks for tuning in to RP Geeks and Gen 2. 
I'll see you next week to look at the beast hacking and slashing, alien bashing, Victorian world that is Bloodborne. Welcome back to Indiana Jonas. I'm your host, Jonas Pilot, and today we're diving into Riot Civil Unrest. So, let's get cracking. Welcome to Riot Civil Unrest, a unique indie game that relives the most significant protests worldwide. With Riot, you're able to experience the most influential riots of the 20th and 21st centuries from both sides. Wade through the chaos that is Riot Civil Unrest. In Riot Civil Unrest, you can play both the side of the protesters who are trying to change the world, or you can play the side of the police who are trying to keep order and peace in the streets. When selecting your campaign, you can choose from several different protests, including the infamous Arab Spring. When playing as protesters, you can select your equipment and specialize yourself for the kind of protest that you want to have. Will you just be a mass of people, disorganized and unarmed, trying to peacefully protest, or will you be a small group of well-armed guerrilla warriors hell-bent on destruction and mayhem? You'll even be able to equip your protesters with certain items, take rocks to throw at the police, or even more violent route with fireworks, Molotov cocktails, and DIY bombs. On the other hand, you have the ability to take on the role of the police in these major riots. Here, you'll be able to equip your police squads with a variety of equipment, ranging from baton types, shields, tear gas launchers, or even dipping into the brutal side, beanbag shotguns, live rounds, and handguns. All these tools are at your disposal to shut down these protests. Will you stand your ground against these rioters, or will you brutally disperse them and send them back to where they came from? Now, it might seem fun to take the most violent option in every scenario, but Riot Civil Unrest actually has a unique mechanic. As you play through a campaign, there's a media war happening alongside your protests. As the protesters, if you have a good media image, more and more people will show up for your next protest. But if you take violent actions towards the police and destroy property, your next protest may seem a little sparse. The same also goes for the police as well. You stand your ground and let the waves of protesters break against your stalwart shields while the protesters become more and more violent, the next protest will see a bit smaller as people will lose faith in your cause. But if you take the path of brutality, beating and gassing and killing protesters in the next protest, these hordes of angry people will be ready to stop your tyranny. Riot Civil Unrest is a truly unique game. With gameplay that not many other games have, it's also an eye-opening device. As you play through the protests of the world, the game will give you a background and history of why and how these protests came to be. Embrace the chaos with Riot Civil Unrest, and thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week. Kirsten, what are you doing here? What do you think I'm doing here? Making TikToks? And it's not about what I do. It's about what we do here. So we start with storyboarding the content we want to create for our clients. It could be anyone from small businesses, nonprofits, and organizations both on campus and in the Maryville community. We write, we film, we edit, we create, and then we wait. So if you're someone who thinks you need us, we are KNWT Creative Services. Welcome one and yeah. I've got this. Uh, huh? Wait, what? This is Nerd Central right here on KNWT Channel 8. Hey! Welcome back to Project Delta, and here I am with my mortal nemesis, Porter Williams. Hi, I'm surprised let me be this close, because I'm seeing red. <laughs> so we're just gonna, be. we're gonna fight it out. Yes. On here, in a video game. In the fields of combat, Mortal Kombat to be specific. Because apparently fighting in real life would cause some like liability issues, and I don't know, something. I think they're just a bunch of babies, the law. But it's okay. We'll, we'll get out our anchor on this Project Delta playing Mortal Kombat. So uh, let's go. Best right. of three. Can do. That guy's got a mouth. That's Baraka. He's I, a Tarkatan. I, I feel like I've seen him. 
Is he yeah. from the old game? Yes. I want to choose this one. He looks cool. You would choose Scarlet. Are you yeah. going to say that about everyone I've got? Yes. Uh, is that how you teabag? No! <laughs> Not bad! Too bad. Life's unfair. You're right. I don't like how, uh, I don't appreciate this right now. Hold on. I'm like Indiana Jonas. Whoa. But you... with blood and a girl. So like Indiana Jonas. <laughs> exactly like him, actually. Got him. No! Literally, literally got him, read it. Literally got him. Read it like a book. I don't think this is going to be enough. It's not going to be enough. Maybe. I think it is. Oh, it is. All right, audience at home. Make sure that your parents are watching. Hold on, I gotta look it up real quick. No! <laughs> You're not gonna look it up! Okay, well, 1VO. Yikes. Nerd. Yikes. Bow, 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 bow. Bow, bow. Bow, 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 bow. bow, bow, bow. bow. Oh, oh, dear. I can, I can take the damage. I can take it. I, I'm not taking any of the damage. I Let's died. go. Ouchie. And I'm totally fine. I got stabbed in the brain. You know. You know when you Remember, get stabbed if you, in the if brain. If you get stabbed in the brain, just struck it off. Aww. You're trash, kid. I really am. I'm really not that good. And the... F Let's go. Check it out. Is it gonna blow up? Perhaps. Oh. That happens. You got blue blood, so there's nothing to censor, because bugs aren't people. I don't have to censor, though, because... Put a warning. I just put a graphic warning. Put a warning that I graphically kicked your <laughs> Two zero. Dang it. You know what? I gotta finish it off with an icon. An absolute king. Ugh. An absolute legend. You're predictable. Gosh. Like playing against them. <laughs> I am. I'm basically a baby. I've never played this. I feel like a lot of our issues come from you just attacking me. Yes. You know? Yeah, that's because I am the superior combatant. But that's, that's kind of rude. You know, where does that place come from? Absolutely nowhere. It's just silly. <laughs> that's what it is. Yeah. You know, I was going for a band, you, you kind of just said no and. <laughs> and you, know, you know you didn't do the and. You just said no. So I'm concentrating on winning. No, there, there's the rules of improv where you're supposed to go yes and, and you know, then it goes toward the funny bit. But um, turns out Porter isn't funny. Yeah. Yeah. And he's a better gamer. How cringe is that? I don't even, I'm not even on Gen 2. What even are you anymore? I heard Garrett was crying, which is hilarious. Yeah. Because it was scary for Garrett. Why but then they it? transported them, as we saw, to a, another dimension of Gen 2. And then Tyrell was freaked out. And then he confessed to you trying to take over my show. <laughs> That's crazy, right? I mean, like, you know. Right? It, right? Perhaps. You wouldn't do that, right? Nah, nah. This is all just a silly little rivalry. I wouldn't take over the whole world starting with Gen 2. Oh. Anyways, that's all we have this week for Project Delta. Thanks, uh, Porter, for joining me. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, you, you absolutely demolished me. On um, God. So you are now like the second person to beat me in a game on here. I am uh, a superior gamer. Good job. Anyways, see you guys later. Bye-bye. That's the end of this episode of Gen 2. Now I'm gonna go crash Nerd Central for April Fools. Make sure to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to not miss our next episode. Oh my gosh. And go check out my show, Nerd Central. Okay, you've done enough trying to kill me and take over our show. Yeah, but it's just like an April Fools type thing, okay. you know, all right, like. All right, all right, I'm sorry, because the whole, you know, take over Gen 2 thing seemed a little serious. Yeah, it, it, it was, but you know, come on. We're, we're both all friends right, here. All right, we're good. We got it. Bring it. <laughs> Wait, you could. <laughs> and then I turned to Garrett. <laughs>
<laughs> this is Tyrell, that's Jonas. Dude, that's so funny. I'm gonna start doing that now. <laughs> Thank you.